NCA Western Region is humbled to bestow the Human Rights Champion Award to our Ombudsman, the Human Rights Defender of Armenia, Dr. Arman Tatoyan. Thank you. America is high that he has nothing be. I remember that as a Sergeani Hargarjan and Hargarjan Senator Portantino. Yev Zeret Gerazan Tsunel, Im Sileli Hayden Gisner. Honorable compatriots, it is a great honor and privilege for me to be here with you today among so many dedicated and professional Armenians to address my speech on a number of vital issues related to the rights of all of us and our sacred motherland. It is of utmost importance to address to you in my capacity as the Human Rights Defender, Human Rights Ombudsman of Armenia. It is an independent official leading the only national human rights institution in Armenia. It is independent from the government, non-political, strong and trusted institution with a broad constitutional mandate to protect and promote human rights. It is mandated to not only support individuals affected by the conflict, but also to promote the culture of human rights. This institution addresses full range of human rights, including civil, political, economic, social, and cultural rights. Armenia's constitution guarantees everyone's right to receive the assistance of the human rights defender in the event of violation of their rights and freedoms. It is an absolute right and cannot be subject to any limitations. Armenia's Human Rights Defender is accredited with the internationally approved highest quality label. This is the A status of the institution as, of, as official recognition of its full compliance with the United Nations famous Paris principles and other international norms. Acting in this capacity as the Human Rights Defender I came across widespread and gross violations of human rights that any institution of such type would ever deal with. This unprecedented experience of observing and investigating human rights violations and severe war crimes started to massively evolve since September 2020 and continues up to now as a result of <coughs> Azerbaijani aggression against Armenia and Artsakh. The aggression that hit hard the population of both Armenia and Artsakh resulted in ethnic cleansings. On Sunday, September 27, 2020, all Armenians in the world woke up to news that the Azerbaijani armed forces had launched a large-scale offensive along the entire line of contact with Artsakh. On this specific day, the offensive by the Azerbaijani army was accompanied by artillery, shelling and airstrikes targeting civilian objects and civilian population. In particular, on this very day, the capital Stepanakert, Martuni and Martakert, and other communities came under fire. As a result of shelling, civilians of Martuni city were killed and many civilians of the same city were injured. The population of peaceful communities was forced to take shelters in bunkers. The 44-day disastrous war started. The 44-day disastrous war started. Azerbaijan, with Turkish, with Turkey's full military support and accompanied by state-sponsored hatred and enmity, 
massive torture and inhuman treatment distracted the civilian communities through targeted shelling, use of prohibited clustered warhead missiles, participation of trafficked jihadist mercenaries and terrorists. From the first moments of the bloody war, the Human Rights Defender of Armenia, in close cooperation with the Human Rights Ombudsman of Artsakh, started 24 hours monitoring and large-scale investigations, on-site visits to civilian communities, work with worldwide international organizations. During the active phase of hostilities and aftermath, civilians were killed and injured due to the indiscriminate and deliberate attacks of the Azerbaijani forces towards the civilian communities and civilian vital infrastructures both in Artsakh and Armenia. Thousands of people lost their properties, houses, vehicles, plots of land, livestock. They were either damaged or destroyed by attacks or fell under the control of Azerbaijani authorities. Tens of thousands of individuals were forced to leave their communities due to threat to their lives as a result of Azerbaijani offensive. Very often, families were spread to be able to find a place to live. This war was accompanied by massive amount of torture and inhuman treatment of Armenian servicemen and civilians captured by Azerbaijani armed forces. With the war expanding, the number of cases and the level of cruelty demonstrated by Azerbaijani military had dramatically expanded, which is also evident from the volume of visual and audio files disseminated online. Atrocities and cruelties committed by the Azerbaijani armed servicemen were widely disseminated through the Azerbaijani social media. These videos of extreme violence were specifically targeting Armenian social media, including children, women and elderly. By this massively spreading scenes of violence and causing sufferings to the Armenian society, playing with emotions of families and the population in general. In many cases, videos or photos were sent to families of victims. Fact-finding activities of Armenia's Human Rights Defender have revealed over 350 videos and photo materials of torture and humiliations, executions, beheadings alive, mutilation of bodies of Armenian military servicemen and civilians by the Azerbaijani armed forces. The border civilian population in Armenia and Artsakh has been hit hard by human rights violations after the war too. In case of Armenia, in the absence of delimitation and demarcation, the border determination process with Azerbaijan is being carried out through massive human rights violations in the context of Azerbaijani genocide and policy and under threats of war against Armenia and Artsakh and its entire population. Immediately after the cessation of hostilities from November 2020, armed Az Azerbaijani servicemen, Azerbaijani signs and flags appeared in the direct vicinity of Armenia's Sunik and Gevarkunik province villages as well as on the roads between civilian communities communities of Sunni. The Human Rights Defender of Armenia launched immediate fact-finding missions to the border communities mentioned above. Urgent monitoring and investigation proceedings have been launched. The visits and launched investigations established, clearly established, that the Azerbaijani armed servicemen forced civilians to leave their lands and houses that have belonged to them in many cases since even before the Soviet times. In November and December 2020, they threatened to destroy villages and houses through UAV, UAV attacks if civilians did not leave their communities. For instance, Borotan village, Arabus village, and more. Along with protection of peaceful life and security of people, the right to freedom of movement has been violated because of Azerbaijani armed servicemen's block posts on the roads between communities of Sunni. Various sections of the interstate road from Goris to Kapan and from Kapan city to Chakaten village and several other villages have come under Azerbaijani control, which has put the movement of civilians in real danger and has already created problems affecting the rights of the border population, including by creating humanitarian crisis situations for the local population of surrounding villages. On 25 August 2021, more than 50 Azerbaijani servicemen blocked the interstate road leading from Goris to Kapan near Davidbek village. On 26 of August, Azerbaijani armed servicemen blocked the road from Goris to Kapan near Vorodan village. 
By blocking the mentioned sections of the road, Azerbaijani armed servicemen intentionally created a humanitarian crisis for several Armenian villages. These villages had been left in a blockade for several days. Since November 11 and November 15, Azerbaijani so-called border control and customs checkpoints were installed on the roads between communities of Sunni province, on the roads Goris Gaban and Gaban Jakaten. Enormous social problems occurred in addition to security issues. Socio-economic rights in Sunni and Gevarkonik provinces have been grossly violated. People are deprived of their properties, even with legal documentation certifying their rights over these properties, with no compensation. Significant number of persons still continue to pay credits for the lost properties. Losses and damages caused to local population have not been counted. No inventory was carried out. Azerbaijani incursions of May 2021 into the sovereign territory of Armenia, Sunik and Gevarkonik, intensified human rights violations and took massive and gross forms, shootings toward civilian communities, setting massive fires near villages and more. The human rights defender monitoring revealed a new case of incursion which took place in October 2020. This is in the region of Kapan community. In addition to all the above mentioned violations, the Azerbaijani authorities continue causing suffering to the Armenian population by illegally keeping our compatriots as captives, civilians and military servicemen. In absolute violation of the international humanitarian law, instead of immediate release and their repatriation. Azerbaijanis keep them under torture and direct threat to their lives. They have launched so-called investigations and artificial trials against Armenian captives, using them for political and military bargaining purposes. Together with all this, the evidence confirms that the Azerbaijani policy of organized hate speech and animosity have become root causes of gross and massive human rights violations and ethnically motivated crimes, not only in the region, but also globally. And here I have to say that just two days ago, with members of ANCA Western Region and Honorable Lawyer Mr. Karo Azarian, we visited, I had the chance to visit San Francisco, and we visited the Armenian church that was set on fire and the Armenian school that was vandalized during the war. This is a vivid example how the Azerbaijani policy of organized hatred and animosity can affect other countries and, I th and the stability of other countries. And I think this is a very important factor that we have to bring to the attention of um, uh, governments of uh, other countries uh, for, the safety, for the sake of the safety of our nation who live in these countries. Armenians have experienced ethnic hatred and countless persecutions. They have been subjected to genocidal massacres and pogroms. This experience continues to this day. Azerbaijan is pre as the president of Azerbaijan actively leads this practice. He routinely uses derogatory terms to collectively describe Armenians, referring to them as bandits, vandals, fascists, barbarians, cowardly nature, people without brain. He also consistently denies the occurrence of the Armenian genocide and called the statement recognizing the genocide by the United States of America in April 2021 as unacceptable and a historic mistake. Recently, he started to attack the Armenian diaspora, claiming that Armenians are poisoned with poison. And I quote here, the poison mainly comes from their diaspora, which sits in a very quiet and nice places in southern France, in California, in Krasnodar Krai, in some other capitals, and enjoy their life. And they want those Armenians in Nagorno-Karabakh and in Armenia to be their hostages and be their tools for them to pursue some ambitious and chauvinistic ideas. This rhetoric is the manifestation of an ingrained hatred of Armenians that finds expression also in the media and the education system. Consistent with this policy of ethnic cleansing and rhetoric of hate, as noted above, Azerbaijan has historically committed countless violations of international law, the majority of which, of which were plainly racially motivated. Azerbaijan's pro pro propagation of hate against Armenians has manifested itself in the condoning, rewarding, and cynically glorifying 
crimes against Armenians. In keeping with its long-standing policy of ethnic cleansing, Azerbaijan has also systemically sought to destroy, erase, and falsify Armenian cultural heritage in the region. This policy is being aggressively carried out nowadays in Artsakh. As a result of military aggression against Artsakh, at least 1,456 overwhelmingly Armenian historical and cultural prominent immovable monuments, including 161 monasteries and churches, 591 Khachkars, the ancient sites of Tigranakert, Azov, North Armiravan, Mirik, Keren, fortresses and castles, and other monuments, remained under the control of Azerbaijan. The deplorable history of persecution of Armenians in the region dates back centuries. The contemporary policies of discrimination against ethnic Armenians, which are an unalliable part of the life within the Republic of Azerbaijan, are rooted in, the de in, in developments in the early 20th century and are linked directly with the genocidal policies of the Ottoman Empire. Our compatriots living in Armenia and Artsakh experience the same threats and difficulties as our grandparents and parents went through in the Ottoman Empire. The ongoing state-sponsored Azerbaijani policy of armenophobia and hatred is the source, is the only source, for the above-mentioned disastrous consequences. We have to learn lessons, recognize threats and act accordingly. How we can overcome all these difficulties and challenges and whether it is possible and whether we can do it. Yes, we can. We have to act in unity and solidarity more than ever. Our strategy should be our joint efforts to ensure the long-standing peace and security of our motherland and our nation. We ourselves are the guarantors of our rights and secure future. Here I would like to thank the Armenian National Committee of America Western Region, the whole team, for their tremendous work and tireless efforts in protection of rights of Armenian people in the diaspora, Armenia and Artsakh. Thank you all for being with us all along the way. We have many seeds to plant along the path. We won't reach our destination in one day, but I know we can get there. We shall never give up, never retreat. We have no choice but to accomplish our historical mission, to use our wisdom and to progress and prosper. Thank you very much. And I have a very symbolic uh, gift in appreciation and my deep gratitude to the ANCA Western Region for your tireless efforts and for awarding the Human Rights Champion to the Human Rights Defender of Armenia. And if you allow, I would like to invite Ms. Nora Ovsepian, the Exceptional Chairperson of the ANCA. The Human Rights Defender of Armenia The Human Rights Defender of Armenia proudly acknowledges the Armenian National Committee of America Western Region for the exceptional commitment to the protection of the rights of the Armenian people and the preservation of identity.
I have two exceptional friends who are present here who have been always with me from the very first day of the war, even before that, but from the very first day of the war, 24 hours being with us. And when I came, by the way, I, I was thinking that I realized and I appreciate their assistance, but when I came to the US after the war, I just realized that I'm, I'm realizing uh, their tireless efforts and the price of their tireless efforts because here I have also to follow the Armenian realities uh, during the night and during the day to work here to, to participate in the meetings. Here I want to acknowledge Mr. Honorable Mr. Karo Azarian and Honorable Garnik Erkoni. who changed so many things in the world, I, I can bring just two examples. One example, Mr. Garnik Erkonyan launched proceedings, participating in the trial before the ICJ, International Court of Justice, and since he was, he also launched certain, some proceedings related to UAVs and drones uh, to, with Canada. We, we were in touch with Mr. Kerkonyan and we launched immediate fact-finding mission to Geva Kunik because we needed evidence of drone attacks and a report that uh, I should have sent, I was supposed to send to Mr. Kerkonyan. By the way, this was the exact day when we had to cancel the first day of our fact-finding mission because of the attacks uh, of the drones. But I appreciate so much Mr. Garni Kerkonyan's assistance because due to this uh, trial and due to this assistance, many things were banned, uh, especially related to the drones. Mr. Karol Azarian was always with us, with me and the human rights defender of Artsakh, by the way, Esben. But our whole institution knows as Mr. Karol Azarian and Mr. both Mr. Karol Azarian and Mr. Kerkonyan. And there are plenty of examples. One of them, which is very, uh, very um, popular among our, uh, in our staff, in our, among my colleagues, is the lessons of Mr. Kazarian, how to advocate for human rights when they were in Armenia, you could see the photos, and uh, we always are guided by this principle. So thank you very much, and if I may invite you uh, for... for of Armenia proudly acknowledges Honorable Garnik Erkonyan, distinguished Armenian lawyer in the United States of America, for the years of consistent efforts and exceptional dedication in protection of the rights of Armenians in the diaspora and world organizations. Defender of the Republic of Armenia proudly acknowledges Honorable Karol Azarian, distinguished Armenian lawyer in the United States of America, for the years of consistent efforts and exceptional dedication in the protection of the rights of Armenians in the diaspora and world organization.
First of all, thank you, uh, Armandjan, for this uh, unique honor, I have to say. Um, but I just want to say a couple words of thank you, obviously, uh, to Arman as well as the ANC. Our nation clearly is in a valley, a very deep valley. But we know that every valley is flanked by mountains. And the only way to rise up those mountains is the same way it has always been. It is through the efforts of Haitan, which at its core is really the epitome of working towards human rights, of working towards Armenian dignity. And that is what we are doing here together. That is what the ANCA Western Region has done repeatedly and for so, so many decades. And I think that the uh, recognition of Atman today here is such a telling exercise of appreciation for a joint mission, a mission that spans the diaspora and the republic and every single Armenian household. So I thank Arman for all of your efforts with extreme professionalism, with undying conviction. You have made such a difference in the hearts of every single Armenian, not only in the Republic of Armenia, but every single Armenian household across the globe. And we appreciate that immensely. And there is a way up that mountain, and it is following the pursuit of Haitad, Armenian dignity, and the Armenian nation's aspirations for security and survival. Thank you. Rafi Kasabian mentioned the Roosevelt name, and I was reminded of Theodore Roosevelt, <coughs> who said, the credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred with dust, sweat and tears, blood as well. The credit belongs to Dr. Arman Tatoyan, who has been in the arena. The credit belongs to the Armenian National Committee of America Western Region, who has been in the arena. The credit belongs to each and every one of you for not only being here today, but being in the arena from San Francisco, from Silicon Valley, and every other chapter of the ANCA Western Region. The credit belongs to the board and each and every member of the board of the ANCA Western Region during these trying times. We are just volunteers in the path. The path is singular. It's the cause, and the cause is sacred. Let us unite behind that cause. Hi, Todd. Thank you very much. to welcome our California State Senator, Anthony Portentino, to deliver a scroll on behalf of the state. Good afternoon. Uh, it is truly an honor to be here today. As you all look back in Armenia this week, and you'll hear more about my trip, but, uh, you know, I was touched by uh, Dr. Tatoyan's comment about how Turkey's attacking the diaspora. You know what it means when they attack you? It means they're afraid of you, right? It means you're effective. And so I'm just honored to be here, honored clergy and Nora and the ANC. Thank you for inviting me to recognize and add a state commendation to Dr. Tatoyan's uh, amazing career. Think about human rights. Think about what Gandhi said about human rights. It's something that we all have the moment we're born being human. It's something we all share in common. And so that's why it's a great honor to be here to add a California State Senate uh, proclamation to the human rights defender of the Republic Armenian, Dr. Armin Tatoyan. Congratulations and thank you for all you do. You make this all a better person, a better country, a better people, and you are better for your efforts. Thank you and congratulations.
Thank you, Senator. Before we break for dessert, we'd also like to present a scroll on behalf of the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors. Here, man. On behalf of Catherine Barger and the entire uh, Board of Supervisors in Los Angeles County, thank you, Dr. Tatuan. Thank you. 